Are you running Facebook ads on a small budget of under a thousand pounds a month? If you are, this video is for you because most of the advice out there across YouTube, although it won't say so, actually is designed for big budget campaigns and may well be the wrong advice for you to follow if you're spending less than a thousand pounds a month, which is actually quite a lot of advertisers. So let's dive in. I'm going to explain the things you need to consider to make Facebook ads with a budget under a thousand pounds a month really fly for your business. This is going to include your campaign setup, your audience targeting, your tracking, your creatives, and what offers that you should be running. We're also going to talk about other more important things off of the Facebook platform that are nothing to do with your campaign setup, such as landing pages, sales processes, and your marketing ecosystem. So there's a lot to go through. So get a pen and paper, check the hyperlinks in the description. If you're after anything specific, you can get straight to it. The only difference between running a campaign with a big budget and a campaign on a small budget is that with a small budget, the AI gets far less data with which to learn and optimize. Facebook campaigns have a learning period with a maximum of seven days. And within those seven days, you ideally need at least 50 conversion events. But the more data you can give it, the better it should learn and perform. So with a small budget campaign, you have to work harder to take the guesswork out of it for Facebook and ensure that your ads are hitting the right people at the right time on the right platforms and ensure that once people do engage, that they get the right experience that actually helps them to convert. Because the thing is, Facebook ads to campaigns today, they use massive amounts of AI computing power to slowly figure out the perfect buyer for your product. So the more data you can give it, generally speaking, the better it will perform. So today, Facebook advises advertising to a countrywide audience and to target an audience size of at least 2 million people. But this isn't great advice for your business if you want to reach a local audience or if you sell a more niched product. Okay, so let's talk firstly campaign objectives. Now, as you should know, there are five main campaigns of objectives. These being awareness, traffic, engagement, leads, and sales. The first big tip is to use the campaign type best articulates what you want to achieve through your ads. So if you want to make sales, don't run a brand awareness ad, run a sales ad. If you want leads, don't run a traffic ad, run a leads ad. This lets Facebook know what you want it to do and there are some subtle differences in how the algorithm operates within each campaign type. So with any Facebook campaign that you run, there's always an optimization objective that you can follow. So with a traffic campaign, you can have link clicks or you can have landing page views. With a sales campaign, there's a various optimization objectives that can include things like landing page views, add to carts, initiate checkouts and purchases. And I think what the natural tendency for people to do is, it's to optimize straight for the purchase. And there is a line of thought which says you should always optimize for what you want to achieve. However, as we said before, you need these 50 optimization events within a seven day period in order to exit the learning phase and give your campaigns the data it needs to really perform well. So if you're selling an item and the average sale price is hundred pounds and you're running with say a 500 pound budget, you need to sell 50 100 pound items with a 500 pounds budget just to exit the learning phase. That's within a week. So that's with, with 115 pounds, you need to be making 50 sales. Very, very unlikely to happen at that budget level. So instead, what we can do is we can optimize for an earlier stage in the customer journey. Because if you think about your customer's journey with a sales campaign, the first thing they're gonna do is land on your website. The next thing they're gonna do is add to the cart. Then they're gonna initiate the checkout and then they're gonna make a purchase but there'll be that attrition rate. So for every 100 people that add to their cart, you might get 25 that initiate the checkout. And from that, you might get five to 10 that actually make a purchase. So if you optimize for an earlier stage in the customer journey, like the add to cart, it's more likely then that you're gonna get your 50 events and then be able to exit the learning phase. However, I will just put a health check on that because everything, all the advice that I give around Facebook ads requires testing because I don't know what niche that you're gonna be operating with. So this works really well for a lot of our e-commerce clients, particularly when we're in the early stage. Generally what we do is we start with smaller budgets and then we scale up to, you know, thousand pounds a day sometimes with clients, but we'll generally start with just a couple of thousand pounds a month. And when we're operating with small budgets, that's what we do. We take it back and we optimize for an earlier stage in that customer journey. So next, Let's talk about audience 
targeting because what Facebook says nowadays is you target a national audience right across the country and you want at least 2 million plus people in there. However, what if you're a home improvement company and you just want to you you can't possibly take a client in Glasgow or Paris or wherever in the world you are. You just want people within 30 miles of your location where well, there might not be 2 million people who live in that location. So what we would always say if you're running with a small budget is that you need to take the guesswork out of it for Facebook. So nowadays you have these advantage plus audience types, but what you can do, we would suggest that you use that, but what you can do and should do is you should give it some direction. So what you do is you refine your audience down, you really, really refine who you're targeting and you target a smaller audience size. I would say definitely no less than 100,000 people. You can go up as really as big as you like now with the advantage audience, but if you're running with a small budget and you need to find someone really really specific then get specific with your targeting your campaigns will still work fine just make sure that you're doing the required testing so you might want to one month run a test to a smaller audience and then run it a bit broadened out the main thing an advantage that a small budget campaign gives you is that you're not going to suffer audience fatigue like you would with a big budget campaign so in a big budget campaign if you're spending a thousand pounds a day you're spending thirty thousand pounds a month on your advertising if you're running that to an audience of half a million people all of a sudden you are all those people will see on Facebook. They'll get real fatigue and they'll actually get a bit annoyed and irritated by your ads. But if you're running with 500 pounds a month or a thousand pounds a month on a small budget campaign, you can afford to target smaller groups of people, but just keep your eye on the ad frequency. When the frequency starts getting above three, four, five, you need to keep an eye on your results. If your results start to dip, you've got ad fatigue and you need to change up your ads quite quickly to keep them fresh, keep them engaging, and keep them appealing to your target audience. Okay, next up we've got tracking. So actually your tracking is not that difficult if you're running a big budget campaign compared to a small budget campaign. You have to have your conversion API set up and optimized correctly, and you have to have your pixel set up and optimizing correctly. But it is more important on a small budget campaign to ensure that it's all functioning correctly because you've got less data that's being sent to your pixel. You've got less conversion events that have been sent to your pixel. So if you're not set up and optimized correctly, then ultimately the, your pixel's not gonna get the data and it's not gonna be able to optimize and it's not gonna be able to get the performance that you really, really need. So common problems could be that you're not pulling values through. So you're pulling purchases, but you're not pulling purchase values. All of these things you're gonna have to really really iron out because unfortunately we saw a client recently who had to switch to a different pixel because there were some complexities with their account and the new pixel just wasn't performing as well as the old one because it didn't have the data so despite the fact that the campaigns that we were running or the client was running were just as good they looked just as good they were designed exactly the same they had about 50% of the performance because the pixel hadn't had the time to gather that data so get your tracking right and I guarantee you will make your life a lot easier. Okay, so your creatives, Facebook recently have come out with some advice that they that campaigns should run with at least 20 creatives per campaign. Now that is a lot. That's a lot of videos, it's a lot of images to create. You definitely don't want to be running with anything like stock images, imagery, anything like that. It's really, really simple nowadays to create really effective short form video, really effective images and animations and things on software like Canva. Um, so we do a lot of this for clients. What you have to bear in mind is your competitors who are also likely to be running ads are going to be running creatives. And if your creatives, if your ads look like the poor cousin, then they're gonna fail because they're gonna be shown directly on site. So if you think somebody could be looking at garden furniture, so we've got a client at the moment, Chimes Home and Garden, selling garden furniture for them right across the UK and lots of their competitors are also running ads. So our creative game has to be on top because if somebody's looking for rattan garden furniture and they're searching on their phone, they're gonna see Chimes Home and Garden and then they're gonna see other competitors like the Rattan Hut and B&Q and all of these different people. And if Chimes' creatives look poor in comparison, the clicks aren't gonna go their way. So get into Canva, get creating. On a small budget campaign, you probably don't wanna be looking at 20 different creatives because you haven't got the budget to do the testing, to spread, to, to really identify, to spread the budget out, to identify what's working best. So I would say you wanna be going for about six to 10, no less than six and probably no more than 10 will be absolutely fine with a budget 
under a thousand pounds a month. Okay, offers. Your offer is one of the most important parts of your Facebook campaign, whether it's a big budget campaign or a small budget campaign. However, when you're running a small budget campaign, you've got less impressions to work with in order to capture the intention and bring somebody in. So you need to be working on having a good offer. Why should somebody stop and engage with your ad and do the thing that you want them to do? So a lot of the time we work with a lot of premium brand clients who sell premium products and premium services, five-star hotels, that sort of thing, and they don't want to discount. So when I'm talking offers, I'm not just talking about discounts. You can also value stack. You can also put bundles together. Limited time discounts work absolutely fantastically. Discounts do work very very well but you don't just want to be the lowest priced in the market because you don't want to create a race to the bottom for your products when you sell these things you want them to be something in it for you for the business so what i would encourage you to do is think about the lifetime customer value of what it is you're selling and to give you a really good example we've got a client that sells telescopes and they sell them right across the uk now they sell a beginner's range of telescopes which are just for people who are just getting into astronomy just want to get into stargazing and astro photography that sort of thing and there's very little profit when they sell these beginners range of telescopes but they know for every one that they sell somebody they're likely to be able to upsell these people over the years as they get more into the hobby so if they sell the beginners range of the telescopes the downstream lifetime customer value of those individuals is significantly higher so by focusing their marketing and their advertising to sell the beginners range of telescopes first of all it's an easier sale because it can go to just about anybody any teenager any adult in the country can get into this as a hobby but down the line they can upsell the more expensive more detailed products so have a think about your lifetime customer value and how you can bring people into your sales funnel through your Facebook ads and then ultimately profit from them long term when you do a fantastic job for them. so that covers a lot of the things and the principles that you'll need to put in place on Facebook but what about off Facebook because all of the stuff you do with your ads is completely irrelevant if the experience people have on your website or with your business is poor. So the first thing, I've got two principles for you to consider. Number one is to don't make people think. And number two is to reduce as much friction as possible. So number one, don't make people think. And that's when people come to your website, people expect things to be organized in a certain way. And they don't want to have all these hurdles and loops to go through. We're working with an education client recently that couldn't understand why they weren't getting the bookings that they should have been for their adult education courses. And when we had a look at the friction within their website, within their booking process, because the ads were were working fantastically the ads were absolutely driving the right people to their website very very cheaply but then they weren't converting we had a look at their booking process and they had a nine step booking process where they acquired so much customer data that honestly in our opinion they didn't really need so once we then took all of that friction out and we we made it really really simple we didn't make them have to think didn't make them have to do anything then things worked so much better we have another client the football fun factory who we were driving people on the principle of of giving people lots of value we tried two different landing pages the first landing page just had an extra step and it had lots of information it had videos lots of engaging content on there after which they had to find a button to click and then go and through through to book the kids activity that we were ultimately selling when we tried a different landing page that had no information on it at all it just had what location do you want click to book with a little line of content which was a call to action book your your child's free three-week trial the conversion rates shot up and we went from about six pounds per sign up to I think one pound 31 per sign up in the busy summer demand so it can make such a massive difference so really have a look at the process when somebody goes through your website to think about what they're doing when they land and uh, to just make things as simple as possible so they don't have to engage their brains at all the final thing to consider is your sales process this is more relevant for leads campaigns when you're actually trying to get people's contact details so you can then engage them in some sort of sales process. And the biggest mistake that we see people make is they wait a couple of days before they call people. And what they'll get is people answering the phone and then saying to them, I don't remember submitting myself as a lead. Generating leads on Facebook is not difficult. Converting those leads from Facebook is what's difficult. And the reason for that is because Facebook makes it really easy for somebody to actually submit themselves as a lead. It's generally, if you do a low intent form, it's a couple of clicks, literally two clicks, and that's it. They've squared their details, some business. 
We need to be calling these leads, preferably within an hour. Now I know that's difficult if, you know, if they drop a lead in at two in the morning, etc. But I would say certainly if they're dropping a lead between your office hours or the hours you're open, you need to be calling them within an hour. So the way that you can do that is you can integrate your CRM system with the Facebook ad system. And if you've got a main CRM such as HubSpot or Active Campaign, you can do that directly. If you don't and there's no direct integration, you can use Zapier. And Zapier can squirt that information straight from Facebook to your CRM. You can then set up an automation so that you or your sales team receive a text message or email the moment a lead drops in so you can then get them on the phone. That way you're more likely to get someone answer the phone and they're more likely to remember actually submitting themselves as a lead and you're more likely to engage them to be able to bring them into that next level. We were working with a client a little while ago that was the minute they engaged a lead, a couple of days later they would send them an email and then the email would simply ask the person to book in a call with one of the sales team. Now they were finding that only 8% of people were actually booking in a call with the sales team. So we worked with them not just to increase their lead quality, but to improve their sales process. And what happened was their conversion rate has just gone from strength to strength to strength, simply off the back of getting in touch with people really, really early on. So that's it. There's a bunch of information there for how you can run small budget campaigns on Facebook. Um, there is hyperlinks in the description so you can jump around, so you can go back, and find what you need. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask them, drop them in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as possible. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.